Shalom, part two. We back. We back. We just gave you that exciting story about Esau and Jacob, and you know Esau was very mad. And remember, his name was called Edom, you know, after he did what he did. <laughs> now we're going to show you why we are in such a great mess right now. I need everybody to get your book, get your book, get your book. I don't care if you're in King James or whatnot, because why? This word is true. Get your book. I want you to go to Malachi 1 and 3. Here we go. But I have hated Esau. I hated Esau. And have laid waste his mountains and his inheritance. Laid waste to his mountains and inheritance. For the jackals of the wilderness. For the jackals of the wilderness. And Edom said. And Ed wait a minute. Who? Who? If Edom said. And if Edom said. Wait a minute. Now was a who name was named Edom? Esau. Esau. So these are the descendants of Esau. That's why it's Edom. Come on. We have been beaten down. We've been beaten down. Let us return and build the ruin. Let us return and build the ruin. Yahuwah of hosts said thus. Mm -hmm. Let them build, but I tear down. And they shall be called borders of wrongness. And the people against whom Yahuwah is enraged forever. Now I want y'all to really remember what you just heard. Because you want to know why? This is the reason why. We are in the mess that we in. The descendants of Esau said that we is going to rebuild the ruins and this, everything that was taken from us. And the father said, go ahead and let them rebuild. Yeah. It don't matter. Let them do what they're going to do. I'm now, huh? Wait a minute. Yeah, he said, I'm going to tear it down, but that's not going to stop them from building. Right. He ain't trying to stop them. He ain't trying to stop them from doing what they're doing. Now, where all this come into play? <laughs> when we read of Jacob and Esau, two nations comes about. Israel and Edom. You always want to fight with the Muslims. You always want to fight with the Chinese, the Hindus, and whatnot. But the real enemy is right before your eyes, who orchestrate and pull the strings for all the other religions and nations to do what they do. He is the puppet master. And you is fighting the puppets, but you have not done nothing with the master. That's why every time when you turn around, the master pull another string and a new puppet arrives. What you mean? Israel and Edom. Now, we always speak of Isaac and Esau, brothers at war. Esau mad because why? Isaac pulled his heel twice, took the birthright, which he didn't care nothing about, but he cared about the blessing. Hmm? It's about that money, right? It's about being able to have people serve you, right? Okay. Uh, I need you to go to Genesis 10 and 5. And you might, um, you, you got your tablet, right? Your tablet got any juice on it? Because you're going to have to do it in King James and you're going to have to do it in on the ISR. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Esau have took what was so precious and he had put a spin on it. And even the elect is being fooled by it. What you saying, preacher? I'm going to show you in these parts where Esau have put the trick on you. The descendants of Jacob. Hmm? And their building process is now. 
And no more is the elder son serving the younger son. But the elder son is showing that he is more stronger than the younger son. Genesis 10 and 5. You got it? Yes. Read. Which book you reading out of? First. Yes, yeah, I want King James first. Because I'm finna show you the beginning where Esau have done begin to play and put his influence on things. Read. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in the land. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in the land. Everyone after his tongue. Everyone after his tongue. After their families. After their families. In their nation. In their nation. And the sons of Ham. Mm -mm -mm. I just need you just to read 10 and 5. Oh. Just read 10 and 5. You got that, right? Mm -hmm. Now switch over into the ISR. And let's see what you catch it. For, the, for these, the coastland peoples of the nation, mm -hmm. were separated into their land. Mm -hmm. Everyone according to his language according to their clan, and to their nations. Okay, now my question asking you, what is missing? <laughs> Esau is so smart. Edom, the Edomites are so smart. You haven't noticed nothing missing, did you? Go ahead, go back to, to, to King James and tell me what's missing. You won't get it. This is where Esau showed out how strong he is. I want you to remember this. If I tell a lie continuously, it'll become the truth. Because somebody gonna begin to believe the lie and defend the lie. You haven't found it yet, have you? Mm -mm. This is where word study come in at people. There is a word that King James used that means something totally different. And the word is Gentiles. Uh, I saw that. The ISR says people. Mm -hmm. okay. The word Gentile was placed there. Now we was taught that the Old Testament was never tampered with. <laughs> but the Edomites who is in control of the religious push when you find out who they are place the word Gentile in there <laughs> go to Galatians 3 and 28 in both books And I'm going to show you how slick Edomites really is. Galatians 3 and 28? Mm-hmm. For as many of you as were immersed into Messiah have put on Messiah. Okay, wait a minute. Is that Galatians? 3 and tw oh, 28. I read 27. Right. There is not Judah nor Greek there is not slave nor free. Mm -hmm. There is not male and female. Mm -hmm. For you are all one in Messiah Yahushua. Right. Did you see that? Now, that was the um, ISR, right? Mm -hmm. That was the book out of the ISR. Now, read what King James said. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, I've got a question. Where did the word Jew come from? Mm. 
Now you don't got another word introduced to you. Jew. Now I'm gonna get you to do a little looking for me. I need you to see where it says neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither Jew nor Gentile born or free. In other words, it was saying it, it, it. Yeah, you just read, read it again, then I'm sorry. Reading King James. Again, I'm sorry. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Mm -hmm. There is neither bond nor free. Mm -hmm. There is neither male nor female. For mm -hmm. you are all one in Christ you Jesus. All is one. Now, go to the next version, which would be the NIV. You want me to do the NIV? <coughs> yeah, do the NIV. And I want to ask y'all which one is right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which one of these teachings is right. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. Hmm, wait a minute. Now we don't got another word. But it's Gentile. Why would the NIV say Gentile? Whenever the regular version said Greek. See, you haven't understood how smart Esau really was. When he said, Jacob has hold my heel twice. And I vow that whenever my father dies, I'm going to kill him. That vow went all the way down through the generations to you and I right now. We are the descendants of Jacob. And there was only 12 tribes that were descendants of Jacob. And was now one of them Jews. And was now, wait a minute, you don't supposed to come and tell everybody. All of them was called Israelites. Hmm? Now watch this. This is what word study do for you. Gentile, the word Gentile, you know, we was told that we was Gentiles, ain't it? Mm? Because he wasn't a Jew or of the Jewish nation, you know, or of the 12 tribe, Hebrew tribes. We wasn't Jews, so we was Gentiles, right? Okay, let's see. Gentile is the root in the Latin word gents. Wow, okay, so in Latin it means gents. Which means extended family, clan. Refer the families which made up the Roman aristocracy, or the privileged Romans. They was called Gentiles. Uh oh. I thought you was a Gentile. Mm -hmm. You was a Rome? You was a Gentile? No. Because the word Gentile was also the Patriots, a word which reached the English language, which especially. The same meaning. So in the English language, it meant the same thing. Until when? Gents came from an additive meaning gentles. Meaning, such a family or an adjective, it came to mean well-bred. In English, it meant a gentleman. But we use the word Gentile to describe people, right? Gentile mean people. But in the language, it was talking about a person. 
And this gentleman is a bit of a snob. <laughs> that was the English, I'm just reading the definition of the English thing. It said he was a bit of a snob. It also came the, uh, the adjective gentle, sincere, kind-hearted. In splits of this that describes a gentleman. Wow. But as a noun, wow. noun, you know, you this word, the adjective describes a noun. So it could be used as a noun, too. As a noun. Mm -mm. In the early Christian circles, it meant traditionalists. This in your early Christian circles. This is your Christian people. It meant a traditionist. The follower of the old religion, hence pagan. Remember, you was told that this is the lower class people. While the upper class people of Rome remain mostly to the face to the traditional God. Thus the word Gentile, used by the early Christians to mean not one of us. Now that's a word study. That's what your word Gentile mean. So, if it says Jew and Gentile, mm -hmm. and Gentile mean not one of us, so how both of us are saved? Whenever he sent the disciples to the lost sheep, Dum, 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 dum. You better listen. It meant not one of us, followers of another religion. Now that's what it meant. Followers of another religion. So how both of us, can you read one of them back for me? There's neither Jew nor Greek. Mm-hmm. There's neither bond nor free. Mm -hmm. There's neither man nor female. Mm -hmm. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So if you're all one in Christ Jesus, as the King James put it, and he said there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Jew nor Greek. Jew nor Greek. Oh, that's the NIV said Jew nor Gentile. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the NIV saying that the Greeks was the Gentile. That don't make sense either, does it? Mm -mm. Watch this. As we sit there and we studied, the Jews simply copied the use of the word after the fall of Rome. Mm. So the ones... Rome, who was in charge, after they fell, the Jews became in charge of themselves. So they adopted the word Gentile and started using it. So since I saw that Gentiles was a spinoff of Rome, so I wondered what Jews meant. Wow. Remember the number I gave you? Renaissance, starting at the 1400s through the 1700s? Listen. I looked up the word and said, I typed this in. And when I typed it in, I asked the question, when was the first time the word Jew was used? And lo and behold, the word Jew started in the 1400s. Oh, <gasps> no. You got to be kidding. So now the false idol was done in the 1600s. The image was done in the 1500s. 
And the word Jew started in the 1400s. Hmm. Is that coincidental? Or does that sound like we gonna rebuild? We just read you out of Malachi 1 where they said we're going to rebuild. And when you find out who the Jew really is, you're going to see that for all this time, you've been bamboozled. We. We. Yes. Say it again, Frenchman. We. Been bamboozled. We been tricked, or in other words, our heel been hold for the second time. Held. Held, my English professor told me, held, not hold. Gotcha. For the second time. The anointing that was placed on us by the right of birth we not willingly, not knowingly, is allowing our birthright to be stolen. That all the scenario between Jacob and Esau is happening again, but it's this time it's in vice versa. Because they are building. Well, let's find out some more. Come on. Now, in the late 1800s, one who is not a Christian was called a Jew. Excuse me, in the late 1400s. I didn't mean to say 1800s. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. In the 1800s, precisely 1849, the Mormons start saying they was the lost tribe of Israel. The Mormons. And they call everybody else Gentiles who wasn't of the Mormon faith. Now my question is this. Who is the Gentiles? What is the Gentile? <laughs> so the word you know in the Bible do not mean what you thought it mean. The word Gentile that you thought was meaning for us as a race, as, you know, Christians, no, Christians ain't Gentiles. Because a Christian is calling everybody who wasn't a Christian a Gentile. And them were the ones who started in Rome. Because Christianity flourished in Rome. So now you come and you said Jesus was a Jew. Now, the idol that you made up is of Jewish origin. It's of Jewish, you know, background. The idol, the blue-eyed, brown hair, full beard thing that flowing with the halo over his head, that is of Jewish origins. But Yahushua HaMashiach was not a Jew. And don't come with this mess. Jew came from the tribe of Judah. That's a lie from the pits. You know it's a lie. Because you want to know why? There is no tribe of Judah. There's a tribe of Judah and Yehudians. But there is no Judah. There is no Jerusalem. There is a Jerusalem. Guess what? 
There is no Jew. You want to know why? Because the letter J didn't came into power. Mm. Until when? Until when? The Renaissance. The Renaissance. Everything was made up of people, a God, a nation. It was made up. By who? Who copycat the most high? The Edoms, the Edomites, the descendants of Esau. Because they told the most high, we're going to rebuild. Watch this. Go with me to Revelations. I got to go back on you a little bit here. I got to go back. My Father, I thank you. Revelations 2. And nine. You got it? Mm -hmm. Read it. I know your works. I know your works. And pressure. And pressure. And poverty. And poverty. Yet you are rich. Yet and, you're rich. And the blasphemy of those who say they are Yehudian and are not, but are a congregation of Satan. Stop right there. Now, I need you to go back to um, Malachi 1, and I'm going to show you how these two verses fit together so brutally. He said in Revelation, he knows your poverty, but you are rich. You there? Yeah, Malachi 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Read it. But I have hated Esau mm -hmm. and have laid waste his mountains mm -hmm. and an inheritance of the jackals of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. If Edom says we have been beaten down, mm -hmm. let us return and build the ruins. Yahuwah of hosts said thus, let them build. Stop right there. That's why he told them in Revelation, I know you. I know who you are. I knew your poverty, because why? I was the one who put you in poverty. But now you're rich. Because you say you're rebuilding. Mm. Come on here. You say you is a, 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 a woman. I need you to get it in King James. Revelation 2 and 9, King James. <coughs> you say you is a what? Mm. Revelations 2 and 9, mm -hmm. King James. I know thy works mm -hmm. and tribulations mm -hmm. and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Do. You are the synagogue of Satan. You are the synagogue of Satan. Why did he call them the synagogue of Satan? Because I tell you why. Woo. Come on here. The ones who he is talking to. Remember he said I came to my people and they knew me not. How can your own people not know you unless they ain't your people. And the reason why his people didn't know him was because, not because he didn't fulfill all the scriptures that was put there in the Old Testament, which they read and they knew it from heart. But why didn't they know him? i tell you why they didn't know him. Go to Revelation, baby. One and three. Describe and show me who he is. Revelation. It's in Revelation. No, going down to the color of skin, candlesticks, and 
that John saw, I saw seven candlesticks. You got it? And in the midst of the candlesticks. I turned to thee, mm -hmm. the voice that spoke with me, and, yes. being, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. There you go. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. This is King James. Now. That's cool. Clothed with a garment down to the foot, mm -hmm. and girt about the paps with a golden griddle. Mm -hmm. His head and his hair were white like wool. His head and his hair was white like wool. As white as snow. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes was as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet was as to fine brass. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And his voice as the sound of many waters. This is exactly why they didn't know him. Because they wasn't looking for him to come that way. That's why they didn't know him. Because why? The reddish brother who looked it different from everybody else changed everything to where light skin was in, dark skin was out. And the Messiah came. All the Pharisees, Sadducees. Remember, they were serving in who? They were serving Rome. All the ones who was in power, Pharisees, Sadducees, Sanhedrins that's in power right now, was of Rome. And they studied the Talmud. Come on here. They studied the Talmud. And the Talmud is an even is an evil old religion that they took and every Pharisee lived by. Sadducee lived by. Sanhedrins lived by. The Tamil. And who are they? They is a people who was not of the tribes, but they studied Judaism. And you want to know the funny thing about it? Judaism has nothing to do with the set apart. That got you. Because you was taught that everything came from Judaism. No. Because there is no Judaism. It's just the evil teaching of the Talmud. And the funny thing about it, the Torah is what we live by. Tamil is what the rest live by. And them Jews, as you hear, Jews, Jews, that you send your money to over there in Jerusalem, that you support and all America is backing, them is the one that changed your word and made King James what it is today. Well, Santanic. Santanic. It had placed words in it and got you believing and you worshiping and you're doing and you're not worshiping the true one.
get in the real word. A lot of y'all don't like it. You and I was brought up on King James. Now the truth is out now. The Jesus that you know was a lie made up. The portrait that you see and worship and believe in the image was a lie that was made up. The Jewish people is a lie that was made up because really all of them came from Poland, Russia. Right now, who are in Jerusalem, as you said, the motherland, which really is for the Palestinians and the Samaritans. They is the real inheritance of that land. They stole that. The Baltics. That y'all, you know, you Russia, the Baltic. Oh, Hitler did this, Hitler did that. Hitler knew that they was not real Jews. You wanna know why Hitler knew that they wasn't real Jews? Because Hitler's mother was a Jew. And don't you get it twisted. Israel is not Jewish. An Israelite is somebody from Israel. Watch this. Whenever you is from New York, what they call you? A New Yorker. If you're from Rome, what they call you? A Roman. Haven't you realized? The people name is of the origin of who they follow. Now you look at it. Us Yehudians, we follow Yahuwah. Yahusha HaMasiah is of the Yehuda tribe, right? Now watch this. Jesus is of the Jewish people. And the Jewish people is from what? Jerusalem. A made up state. That is not the Holy Land. Go to the Gaza Strip. Because let me ask you something. If Jerusalem, as you said, was the Holy Land, then why is it so much fighting in that place? Why is it that all the world religions, religion, listen to what I'm saying, all the world religions abide in that one place? You tell me why. See, this is something that you have not even thought of. The Gentiles, not real. Jews, not real. Jerusalem is not real. The image of Jesus is not real. I got a question for you then. What is real? See, Whenever you see them praying at the Western Wall, as you see, and they're doing like this, that is a, a satanic move to where you're supposed to be humping the bull. And you see the rabbis doing it, huh? No. The real Israelites don't even perform that ritual. When you realize that what set apart meant, set apart meant that you do not worship none of them religions. 
That's why he was set apart. And that's why we was called the set apart ones. Because why? Yahuwah was set apart. Go read and understand. Start doing word studies. And stop all this. Well, the preacher said, and I believe. Well, this is what we was taught. I was believed. The Ruah comes that it may give you knowledge. He said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Because why? You won't study. Huh? I'm going to share something with you right quick, like. And then, and then I'm going to close. I'm going to share something with you. Right quick like And I'm going to close. Let me see. Watch this. A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes. That is so true. The word Jew did not come into existence until the year 1775 A.D. Whereas the occurrence in the Bible took place around 4,000 B.C. to 7 A.D. Who, listen to me now. Who is a Jew? It's modern cartoons, points to someone who followed and adhered to a faith similar to that of the Pharisees of Judah. Now, if I'm lying, I'm lying by, by, by behind truth. Look up this as you study B-I-B-I-L-C-I-S-M, Biblicus Institute, I-N-S-T-I-U-T-E, the Biblical Institute. And this is what the Biblicalism Institute has to say. One who follows the faith similar to that of the Pharisees of Judah, but is not of the tribe of the stock of Judah. In other words, Jews are people from other nations other than the 12 Hebrew tribes who practice a faith known as, here it goes, these people practice Judaism, and Phariseeism, the doctrine of the Pharisees. It is much like those who believe in Christ who are called Christians. Why? In honor of the one whom they follow. And their religion is known as Christianity. Bam! Look at that. Christians, Christ, Christianity. Right? Jesus, Jews, Jewish nation. All oh, does it have a familiar ring? Is everything sounding about the same? Listen, if one was to say Christians are Judaites because of Christ was of the tribe of Judah, it would be a fallacy. In much of the same way, Jews are not Judaites or Judeans. In fact, the religion that is known as Judaism it's actually, it's actually Phariseeism. As it pertains to Phariseeism, it's a misdemeanor since it is neither the doctrine of Judah nor that Christ practiced, hence not of the Abrahamic faith. It is the doctrine of the Pharisees of the old or evil doctrine that they brought back from their Babylonian captivity. It does not follow the truth of the Bible, neither of the Old Testament or the New. Its central tenets is found in a book called the T-A-L-M-U-D, the Tumult. Now this is what you're following when you're dealing with the Jews. This is their belief. But you support them. You're in cahoots with them. You love them. A people who is not even of the tribe of the stock. See the Babylonian. Listen, listen, listen. The 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 book that is called a turmoil 
is the real satanic verses, a book full of worldly tradition, lies, and superstition. The Babylonian term rule is based on the mystical religion practice of the Babylonians, which were assigned by the Judaized rabbi, rabbis during the Babylonian captivity around 600 B.C. The Pharisees who came back with this religion and made it known. Who are the Pharisees? The Edomites of Edom. Because why? See, this going to throw you for a loop. Jacob and Esau was brothers. That's why the father said, I came to my people, but they knew me not. Wake up. Understand that your soul is at stake. And if the blind lead the blind, then both of you falling in the ditch. Now that ain't my word. That scripture. I gave you the truth. And whether you want to do it or not, that's up to you. But the truth is the truth. And if you don't believe it, look it up on your own. Do something sometime for yourself. But I beg you. Don't throw me away and holler all oh, this man full of bull. These are the words from my father and your father. No man taught me this. No man gave me this. This is straight from the pipeline, hot off the press, if you understand what that means. Either you're going to love what Yahuwah is saying, or you're going to hate and stick to the tradition of man. And that's up to you. Shalom. Another one bite the dust. Strike two for the idol. Strike two for his people. Strike two on the belief. Now my next thing I'm going to come back. And I'm showing you with all facts. Whether you want to believe it or not. Shalom.